good afternoon. We begin the next talk. First of all, I would like to make those tiny exercise in linear algebra to, and to prove that curl of curl is equal uh, minus Laplacian plus gradient of the divergence. Practically everything uh, depends upon the algebraic properties of this epsilon, epsilon which in, in um, um, Cartesian coordinates Sometimes it is called Levi Civita symbol or, or so, yeah? So it is something, it is something, it looks like a tensor. By the way, I will make for you in one of those future lectures a small, small repetitory of, uh, say, introduction to, to differential geometry. But at the moment, we still work in Cartesian coordinates. So what is that? It is e equal 1 when KLM is um, an even, even permutation of one, two, three. You know what is permutation, yeah? It is just changing order. Now, every permutation is a su superposition of some amount of transitions. Transition means that we change two neighbors only, just exchange them. And of course, uh, this representation of a permutation as a superposition of trans, trans, trans what? Transpositions, oh, of transpositions is not unique, is not unique. One permutation may be represented in many different ways as a superposition of transpositions. However, the parity is preserved. Therefore, all the permutations, how many permutations of three elements do we have? Do you remember? Six, six. Because first of all, we may put one of the three at the first place, and next, what remains, there are two. So we may put them like that or like that. Three times two equals six. So we have six permutations. These permutations split into class of uh, even and odd, which means that it may be decomposed into uh, even number of uh, trans forgot transpositions yeah of transposition or odd and now if this is an even permutation then we put one we put minus one one if this is odd and zero otherwise So let me just list all these permutations. So for, for example, I may, may put one at the beginning. If I put one at the begin, beginning, then I may have two, three, or one, three, two. Yeah? Then I may put two at the beginning, and then I have one, three, or three, one. And finally, we may put three at the beginning, and then I have one, two, or three, 
two, one. And now, which of them are even and which are odd? This is even, so let me put plus, this is even. This obviously is odd because it comes from that by just one uh, transposition, yeah? One. Of course, we may uh, represent it as a superposition of 17 transposition, yeah? Because one, two, three, four, five, and, uh, but each t t two of them like that and like that cancel. So finally, 17 is the same as one, yeah? In any case, this is odd. Now, this one. This is odd, of course. This one is. Huh? Three one is, is, is even, and this is odd. Yeah? For, for three elements, it is easy to remember because those who are cyclic are even. However, if in a three dimension, uh, in a four dimensional case, if there are four, uh, this uh, the cyclic the cyclic permutation is not uh, even because if I put if I want to put first one at the end, then I may uh, make one transposition, two transpositions, three transpositions. Therefore, a psychic transpositions are uh, odd. But in three dimensions, this is a, a nice uh, way to remember that Posit, uh, plus are those which are cyclic, yeah? Okay, for instance, this one, I put three in this case, and this one, I put one at the end, and so this, they are cyclic, okay. And now, the following exercise. However, those epsilons, they are slightly tricky objects in curvilinear coordinates. But at the moment, we stay at the level of Cartesian coordinates. But I will teach you a little bit how, how to deal with those objects in curvilinear coordinates. By the way, I have written a, a, a book in uh, differential geometry, and I claim in the introduction that differential geometry is a science how to perform, how to do calculus in curvilinear coordinates. Nothing less, nothing more. And I will give you some short introduction in or, or of course you know a lot of the this but I hope that my in tutorial in introduction to differential geometry will be useful for you but at the moment we okay so the following very simple exercise ah by the way whether I put those KLM upstairs or, or downstairs in, uh, in uh, Cartesian coordinates, it doesn't matter. It is that. However, I hate to uh, mix them. What is down must be down. What is up must be up. <laughs> because in curvilinear coordinates, the, the position of the, an index is extremely important, and therefore I, uh, I will make for you the following exercise. KLM, 
and here epsilon m i j and you see this means that I take the summation over m. Of course I could use put both of them upstairs and write down that we sum over m. But I prefer this because the formula which I will write down here is also valid in curvilinear coordinates. But at the moment let me prove it only in uh, Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so let us try to calculate this object, which means that the, 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 it is an object with four uh, 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 four uh, indices alive, say, because M is already killed. It is summation, yeah? It turns out that this is a tensor. Even if epsilon is not a tensor in curvilinear, and this also is not a tensor, but the reason why this is not a tensor is cancel in a certain way, and the result is that this obje object and this formula, which I'm going to write for you, to, to, to prove also, is um, um, valid in any system of curvilinear coordinates. Okay, so first of, of all, let me see, uh, observe that, ah, yeah, that first of all, this epsilon is totally anti-symmetric, yeah? If I ch exchange, or in other way, uh, words, if I apply one transposition, then it changes the sign, yeah? Because if previously it was paired, then it becomes, after adding one transposition, it becomes odd and vice versa, yeah? Therefore, it is totally anti-symmetric. What does it mean? It means that if two of those indices are the same, it must vanish. Because permutation never permits to have two indices uh, the same, yeah? Because it, we only change, yeah? So, it is surely zero if k is equal l, of course, because this is zero then. Or uh, i equal j. Yeah, so this is easy. So we may limit ourselves to considering the case where those two and those two are different. So observe that if i and j do not b belong to the set given by k and l, then it is ag again zero. Do you remember this notation? i and j are just number one, two, or three. K and uh, L are also there. So this is a set because this, uh, when I am writing those numbers like that, the order, the order counts. If I write one, three, two, it is a completely different permutation. However, here, whether I uh, write k or l or l k, it is the same, because this is just a set. This is a set of two numbers among three. Now, if one of them does not belong to this set, then it, will, it is zero. I'm going to prove it, because k and l are some two numbers among one to three. 
Suppose, so in order to have non-zero here, the only case is the, when m is the remaining third number, right? Neither k nor l. And in the, in the set which is composed of three elements, if two are already occupied, there is only one possibility of m in order that this does not vanish. Okay, therefore, also this one here, if this, for instance, if this is one, two, then the only possibility to have non-vanishing value of this element is m equals three. Therefore, the only uh, term in this, because a priori, this is sum over three possibilities. m equals one, but this is zero, if this is one, two. m equals two, but also this is zero. So only m equals three contributes to the sum. But if m is three, then none of them can be three because then this will be zero, yeah? Which means that i and j must be, uh, must belong to k, uh, to this set kl, yeah? Okay, so this I consider this statement to, so now what remains, so the only non-vanishing case is when ij belongs to this set. But what does it mean? Either i equal is equal k and j equal l, or vice versa, yeah? Because if we have two elements, and they must, two different elements, and they must belong to a set which is composed of two different elements. So either first one is equal to first, second to second, or vice versa, yeah? Or I equal L and J equal K, yeah? So in this case, if i is equal k, j equal l, so this means that this is a cyclic permutation of that. Which simply means that the, if this was cyclic, if this was even, then also this is even. So one times one is one. Or this was even, but a cyclic permutation of something which, uh, not even, Th this is odd, but a cyclic permutation of something which is odd is again odd. So, yeah, which means that this is minus one times minus one. Therefore, in this case is one, sorry, and minus, <laughs> okay, well, and minus one if I equal L, J equal K. Okay, sorry. Yeah. However, this formula may be nicely written in the following way. That this is delta K I delta L, J, so this covers this case because delta is equal one, this is a Kronecker delta, you know it, yeah? Where K equal I, it is one, otherwise it is zero, and yeah, so this covers this case, and now, L I delta K J. This covers that case. And so this is the final formula which is absolutely 
which is valid also in curvilinear coordinates, which you will see later. Oh, okay, so now let me finally calculate this curl of curl of D and let us calculate the component number say K of, of this object. So a curl it is epsilon K L M D L and now we must take the component number M of the object whose curl we calculate. Yeah? So I must write here curl D and the component number M. Okay? And let us go further. Now we'll write down the value of this of this curl, yeah? So let me erase this. I will for, I will remember this formula. So it is equal epsilon K L M D L and now we must calculate curl. So this will be number M. So it is epsilon M. And again, I, okay, I, J, D, I, D, J. I have written this way. In, uh, in Cartesian coordinates, the fact that I have my own, uh, how to say, prejudices and fears that I, uh, doesn't bother you too much. However, the formulae which I am writing are, are consistent with uh, differential geometry. So I really uh, stick to the fact that this M and this M are on different levels. However, these I and J's are okay. I could put, I could write down it like that I J and they I and they J. This is equally good. This is equally good. Only that you may ask me what is D. Uh, delta with number i downstairs, so it is a derivative with respect to um, coordinate number i. And upstairs, in Cartesian coordinates it is the same, but in different coordinates it is not the same. But now we are in Cartesian, therefore we have no headache at the moment. Okay, now this, of course, this is zero. This is zero or one or minus one. Therefore, uh, we may put differentiation uh, below because this, when differentiated, gives zero. So it is nothing but. This is delta k i delta l j minus delta l i delta k j. So this is the product of those two epsilons. And now we have two uh, derivatives d l d i and finally dj. Okay, 
So, now again, those deltas are either 1 or 0. Therefore, I may put them uh, besides they commute with, with uh, differentiation. Yeah, so I will put it here. Yeah, uh, yeah, so if I put it here, delta LJ dj gives me dl. Uh, sorry, dl. Do you see? Delta LJ with dj gives me d number l, right? Okay, what remains is these are those two derivatives. Of course, in Cartesian coordinates, they commute. Therefore, I may write it this way, d i d l and when I put this delta l i, so I will have minus d l d l and this is nothing but a Laplacian and this delta with dj makes me d k, right? Which is exactly what I have written previously, namely, this is divergence, divergence of d, and this is gradient and the component number k. Whereas this is nothing but the Laplacian of d k. So if I skip this index k, I will get this abstract formula which I have written previously that curl of curl of a vector field is gradient of divergence plus a Laplacian. Oh. Okay. Now, I would like to So we already know that every component of the electric and magnetic field in the vacuum, in the vacuum, fulfills um, the uh, wave equation, yeah? So the, of every component, dk is equal to zero uh, of b k, but of course in vacuum because otherwise there are those uh, there is a charge density and the uh, current density which enter into uh, into a ga game but in vacuum yeah. let me also make the following remark then if we take in, in uh, spherical coordinates let me write down dr dr consider such a function so it is nothing but x number k times or maybe k number times dk 
Yeah? Why? Because uh, uh, xk may be represented as xk divided by r, r multiplied by r. And what is that? This is the, uh, the vector which is a unit vector. So this is a vector uh, or, uh, orthogonal to each sphere. Yeah? So this is nothing but R times NK times DK. So the uh, projection of D on the radial unit vector is nothing but DR, yeah? the radial component of that. Yeah? So you understand. And you okay. So now let me calculate the uh, the Laplacian of this function phi. So it is nothing but D L uh, or D L D L uh, and here X L, no, X, K, D, K, right? Okay, now, when I perform derivative in the direction of, uh, of coordinate number L, of a uh, coordinate number k, what do I get? Who knows? For example, if I take the derivative dx of y, what I do get? Zero. zero. And z, also zero, only when I put here x, I get one, yeah? So finally, this is nothing, but this Kronecker delta, delta KL, right? Of course. Therefore, if we know already that, so I put, D, I leave DL to the very end, and, and now this will be delta LX uh, K d k plus x k d l d k right okay Now, what is that? This is nothing but DL, right? Because if we sum over K, then only when K is equal L, it is one, otherwise it is zero, so this is DL. So we have the following, DL, DL, or if you wish, this is dl dl, and this is it is nothing but a divergence. Yeah, it is a divergence of of this field. Yeah, but we know that in vacuum this is zero. Yeah, plus and again. First, I act with dl over xk. If one of them is downstairs, another upstairs, then it is Kronecker delta. But of course, this is something like dl over xk. In Cartesian coordinate, it doesn't matter whether this object, so it is Kronecker delta d. L 
x uh, k so when this axon x times d l d k and then afterwards it is plus x k remains untouched and we have dl uh, dl 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 dk but this is nothing but uh, laplacian of dk yeah so finally we have this is divergence vanishes yeah it is you this is also divergence because we add over L and K, so this is also divergence. Not, not that, but this is equal zero again because it is a divergence. So finally, we have that. So we have XK times Laplacian of DK. But we have already proved that in vacuum this is equal to the seg uh, that every component uh, of D fulfills wave equation. Therefore, it is nothing but xk, and here we have d k double dot. Yeah? And then, so this is nothing like phi double dot, yeah? Because if I, at the very beginning, ah, here, if I here put a dot, R remains R, it doesn't change, so it is precise, ah, X is X, remains X, so the time derivative, X on the on that. So we know already that also this field phi fulfills wave equation. And of course, in the same way, if I uh, do the same for the magnetic field, namely R, B, R, then in the same way, because the divergence of the magnetic field is zero, then the same way I prove that the divergence of the another front. Okay, it turns out that the entire information about the about the evolution of of uh, electromagnetic field is here. When I know these fields and, and their uh, time dependence, then I am able to recover the entire uh, field D and B, so I know everything. Therefore, one can say that Maxwell, that electromagnetic waves is nothing but two scalar wave equations. And now I, so I have called wave equation a mother of every evolutionary equation, and this is true, this is true. But also, elect, uh, also gravitational waves. Gravitational waves may be reduced to two independent wave uh, equations for two uh, independent degrees of freedom of the field. So it is really well worthwhile to study mathematical properties of the wave equation because it describes our funda of course, a priori, if you write down Einstein equations, they look much, much more uh, complicated and so on. But first of all, wave equations are very small perturbations of a, of a flat space. 
Therefore, we may use linear approximation. And in, in linear approximation, if you are sufficiently intelligent, you will immediately, but you have to be. <laughs> Many people are not sufficiently intelligent to notice that linear linearized version of Einstein equation is nothing but two wave equations. So, so it is always the same mathematical phenomenon. Okay, I believe this is the end. Let me... Uh, I forgot to give you the list. Yeah, please write down uh, 12 April and so on. Okay. Another story which I would like to tell you today, which is also mathematics, but very useful, is a short introduction to uh, spherical functions. Because spherical functions has, are very, very important objects and they will also be useful. So for a while, as you see, I, I will leave physics and I will stick to mathematical properties, which are very important, but of course our goal is not mathematics, but the physics of this. Okay. You probably had in your curriculum some course in quantum mechanics, yeah? Therefore, you know spherical functions which are uh, which are eigenfunctions of the total uh, angular momentum and so on and so on. I would like to introduce those spherical functions from a completely different point of view because they are very useful also for those uh, of us who is not working in quantum mechanics. I am working in, in quantum field theory, but even if you are completely classical, if you work in general relativity and you don't want to have anything to do with complex functions, because in this uh, approach they were functions of the type uh, I to M um, phi and so on, but we don't want to have anything to do with comp.
to finish this story, let us list a number of those uh, quadru independent quadrupole functions. So according to that, A is nothing but uh, so A equal 1 and anything else 0. So this is x square minus z square. Yeah? So this is one function. Now D equal 1 and remaining components equal 0. So it is y square minus z square. And the three uh, of diagonal. Yeah? B, C, E. What is B? It is x times y. Of course, if I take one, then it will be twice. But okay, I will take one half, b equal one half. Uh, y, z, and x, z. So these are four, uh, five independent uh, harmonic functions. Uh, yeah, and of course, spherical functions are, are those which uh, is the value of these functions on a sphere. Which means that I divide it by r square. So I, I plug x and z and y equal r equal 1 times cosine and sine. So, so these are just combination of sine and, and cosine. Yeah? Okay, that's all. And indeed, the, there is. On. Now, let me come back to. Ah, I must. I believe I must close this because. Let me come back to Maxwell equations, and I would like to show you that they are incompatible <laughs> such as they stand a priori they are incompatible with uh, Newtonian physics yeah, so uh, divergence of D equal rho there are different for instance very often we put 4 pi here or so there are different <laughs> different um, um, notations four pi must be somewhere if either we put it here or we put it in the coulomb law <laughs> so there might but this epsilon zero is not necessary because it is just the choice of, of units so i prefer to use this notation now divergence of b equals zero now I have used this epsilon zero and mu zero in order to follow the steps of Maxwell. But once we have already uh, noticed that the square root of uh, one over mu zero epsilon zero is exactly equal to the speed of light, At times of Maxwell, it was not measured very accurately, but still it was astonishing uh, equality for him. So then, um, curl of H equal 
J and uh, and plus D dot curl of E equal no minus B dot okay these are Maxwell equations and this uh, relation between um, induction objects and these fields I hate this notation I prefer to use uh, such um, units, physical units, which are not very useful for those physicists who work in the laboratory, but are very useful for us, the theoretical physicists, namely such that uh, uh, epsilon zero and mu zero is equal zero.